Aleluia. Aleluia to Jesus. Aleluia to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Wow. Good afternoon. From where you are watching, because it's afternoon in the United Kingdom, or good evening, or good morning, wherever you are watching from, or you may be watching from. The Lord keep and bless you. The name of the Lord exalt and be your strength now in the name of Jesus. I have no right or copyright to the music at the background. And I bless the name of the Lord for Sasha Cox. The Lord increase our anointing in Jesus' name. The Lord increase your own anointing and empower you. There is power indeed in the name of Jesus. And you will find out soon. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Tremendous power to break every chain, to heal every sick to raise the dead. There's tremendous power. And I'm praying as you listen to me today, the power of that name Jesus will touch you. If you are sick, the power of the name of Jesus will heal you. I pray for everyone afflicted by the coronavirus, everyone in hospital, everyone on ventilators, that the Lord will heal the Lord will send his word and the name of Jesus will perform healing. There will be cures, there will be testimonies. And you and I will live. And we will testify that Jesus is in his name. In Jesus' name. Good afternoon again, or good morning, or good evening, wherever you are watching from. You are welcome to the programs of the Redeemed Christian Church God Fountain of Revival, Global Evangelism and Revival Movement. We want to continue with our series, Hearing the Voice of God, part 26. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Let's go. I pray you'll be one of the armies that God is raising for this end time. And I'll be true as well in Jesus' name. Let's go. Hearing the Voice of God, part 26. Part 26, the gift of prophecy, part 2. You know, we did part one yesterday, the gift of prophecy, part one. Just a brief summary, summary. What is prophecy or the gift of prophecy? We say prophecy never came by the will of men, but holy men of God speaks or they spoke as they were inspired, as they were influenced by the power of the Holy Spirit. We said they did not speak from their own human imagination or shenanigans or skills or suggestions or ideas but the Holy Spirit moved and he spoke, okay? And we said now, just to jump, that the gift of prophecy is the supernatural ability to speak or reveal the total counsel, will, and mind of God through the influence, inspiration, illumination of the Holy Spirit, okay? And we must be very careful of false prophets, prophets and prophecy, okay? Prophets who are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. And... Let's have some of the things we did last um, yesterday. The videos are on our Facebook page. They are on our YouTube um, channel. You subscribe to our YouTube channel. You just follow us on Facebook and you'll be inspired. And thank you for your messages, your questions. Some of the questions that were asked, they are very sensitive and they are not stuff I will answer publicly. So I skip them. And I would I have rather dealt with the questions privately and speak on, on about them on publicly. But today I'm going to inspire you um, with a testimony. So I will not go into any. I will just go straight to the to the what we want to do: the gift of prophecy, part two, from the series "Hearing the Voice of God," part twenty-six. I want you to please watch this video to the end because there's something at the end. From the beginning and the end, it's going to be full of power, deliverance. So many things are going to happen, so make sure you watch it to the end. Okay, whether you're watching it now or later, whenever you're watching, make sure you watch it to the very end. Let's go. I said something yesterday. I said some people are searching for liberty. 
in their search for liberty, they put themselves in bondage. Second Peter 2.19, second Peter 2.19. Why they promise their liberty? They themselves are slaves of corruption, by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage, second Peter 2.19. I've been speaking to you about the gift of prophecy, of prophecy, very key gift, very, very after apostle, is, 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 we have uh, uh, the office of the fivefold ministry, apostle, the prophets, okay? We have the, um, is it the pastor, we have the, the, um, the, the evangelist, and we have the, the teachers, or we have, no, we have the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, okay? So um, the gift of prophecy mostly is demonstrated by people who are in the prophetic ministry, but every one of us can, can prophesy. It's a gift. It's, 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 it's one of the gifts, you know, like the gift of healing and working of miracles, like the gift of interpretation of tongues, or the gift of, um, that I've told you of in the past, with the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and descending of spirit. This is a gift. But I, I have linked it to prophecy and the gift of prophecy so that you can understand them better, because it's so key in this end time to understand this gift, okay, and the office as well. So I just read a, a, a text of the Bible to you, and I'm going straight into what God wants us to do. You see, when we fall victim to an error, when we fall, listen carefully, when we fall victim to an error, or victim of a false prophet, we are overcome and in, put ourselves in bondage because of that error, or by that error. I'll say it again. When we fall victim to an error, it can be a false doctrine, a false stuff, or a false prophet, we are overcome and bound by that error. I'm going to do some stuff here. You see, what we do, we are inspired. Okay? I was a Muslim. So, um, we don't get, we were not out to offend anybody. We are not out to get, target anybody. We are just moved as the spirit leads us. I'm going to say some things before I go to what I want to say. If Someone comes to minister in your church. This is for growing ministers of the gospel. People that are two, three years in ministry, they are just coming up. If someone comes to minister in your on your altar and is using object like camel and starts saying, as the camel and does this in the desert, watch it. Watch it. That's not prophetic. That might be something you don't have any understanding about that is trying to draw you into the occult of witchcraft. They bring thought west, say the thought west is so careful and slow. Watch it. Your people are being uh, they are about putting your you and your people in bondage. So watch it. What people that use objects to minister, like skeleton, okay? Like like skeleton, like bringing the slippers, orange slippers, orange slippers, and say as the orange stuff. Watch it. Watch those objects on your pulpit. Watch them, please, and be careful. Okay? Watch them. And the second thing I want to also encourage you as young ministers, those of us growing up, if someone comes to minister on your altar and is ministering and calls you out and you stand by him and is prophetically saying some negative things but in a subtle way and you are standing by him, you are giving that person authority to mess the people up you, you that are under you. Be careful. This is for ministers who are going to ask questions. Okay? So now let's go. I get those guidance will help us. Now let's go. Now, I'm, I'm sharing a true life experience to, with you. This is real. This is not that I put it together or I imagine it. This is what I'm going to share with you now. It's real. You see, some of us in our search for liberty, for freedom, for wealth, we may enter bondage at the cost of our destiny with some of these prophets. A friend went to Nigeria for, uh, from London, okay? Went to Nigeria from London to see a prophet, a priest, whatever you call the person. She came back and said to the other friend in London now, I met a very powerful prophet and I want you to get in touch with him. And the friend said, why, why give me his number? I will. So the friend got the number and called the prophet. And the prophet started to speak and told the friend that got the number from the other friend, a prophecy. If you don't 
do this or that, within this period of time, you are going to die. That was the prophecy. And what she was asked to do involved some amount of money, I mean, some big amount of money. And she needed to do it within some period of time, otherwise she was going to die. Now, she doesn't want to die. Absolutely. You can't hear that and keep quiet. So she started searching for the money, running up and down to get the money, which all she did, I believe, got frustrated everything she was doing. She got frustrated because she couldn't get the money, big, big amount of money. So she fell asleep, tired, exhausted. This person fell asleep. True life testimony, fell asleep. And she had a vision. Someone like Jesus appeared to him. Or the Holy Spirit will reveal himself to this person, this woman, and took this person to a place in Nigeria and showed this person a man coming from like a hut, a prophet somehow coming from a hut. And he pointed to the man and says, Is this one you are afraid of? This one cannot kill you. He didn't create you, he can't kill you. Don't be afraid of him. So the lady woke up from the vision and the dream. Ah, she was amazed. So she called her friend that introduced the prophet to her. I said, that prophet you told me about, is it like he described the person he saw, she saw in the vision, in the dream? I said, oh yeah, that's the way he looks. He said his, his place, his house, where is, is it like the, the, what, you know, just describing what she saw in the vision, in the dream? I said, yes, how do you know? He said, he cannot do anything to me. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to do anything. You know, from that moment, she never, never run or turn to those type of prophet anymore. She learned her lesson because Jesus intervened. Why did I share this testimony? I shared it because of what we are going now. Some of us, in the midst of looking for liberty, Freedom, children, power, positions. We have done it in the wrong places and we have put ourselves into bondage. Some of us have to donate animals every time. Some of us don't the animals we have to donate. It's people, human beings, we donate. Mistress. <laughs> That's why some of us were called. We are called to minister what God asks us to do. Not to minister to peace men, but to minister according to the way the Spirit leads us to yield ourselves to God. You can't expect more of us to leave our full time jobs, things that we have fetched of money and are now working for God and now become hypocrites. God forbid, you know. So just bear with us. We are not trying to offend anyone, but just trying to help, okay? So some of us, we have put ourselves into some things. Because of some prophetic actions, some people say, uh, say we should take. And now we are in bondage. Every month we must do something. Every year we must do something. Every time we must do something. Now God wants to set you free. Let me go straight to the point. God wants to set you free. So I'm here to, I want to pray first for you before I continue. Isaiah 49, 24 to 26. Uh, let me read the offer. Isaiah 49, 24 to 26. It says, can the free be taken from the mighty? Can the lawful captive be delivered? No. Let me read this from the Bible. So that I will read it word for word. Isaiah 49, 24. It says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captive of the righteous be delivered? Some version say lawful. But thus says the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contend with you, and I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Now, if you have entered into a covenant because of some prophetic stuff that came, and you have to do a sacrifice, you have to do a ceremony every month or every time, or you are even in your court, God is about to set you free if you are ready. Because you have to be ready. So I'm going to pray based on this scripture. Even if you, you, are, you are lawful, you miss, you took yourself and went there. You are the one that put yourself into it. 
God is about to set you free. So in the name of Jesus, every captivity, every bondage is broken now. In the name of Jesus. Every association that is ungodly, every association, every association, every agreement is hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Every ordinance, every handwriting of the enemy that has been working against you because of this covenant is hereby broken by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and over you, and I decree all the demons, the powers of darkness that are associated with that covenant, with that agreement, they are bound. They are bound. They are cast out. Their works are destroyed. As it is written in 1 John 3, 8, 1 John 3, 8, it says, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. The works of the enemy associated with that agreement or covenant, they are hereby destroyed. As it is written in Matthew 15, 13, Matthew 15, 13, every plant my father has not planted will be uprooted. Every plant my daddy has not planted that has held you bound is hereby uprooted in Jesus' name. The Bible says, who the Son makes free is free indeed. I declare your freedom now in Jesus' name. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. From today, if you have said amen and agree with this prayer, all those things you used to do monthly, stop doing it. Nothing will happen to you. I mean, nothing will happen to you. Nothing. Nothing will happen to you. All those money you used to do, don't send it again. Nothing will happen to you. Nothing. Okay, because you are now out of that covenant. Say to yourself, I am out of every evil covenant. They are broken by the power in the name of Jesus and by the power in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Congratulations. Give Jesus the praise and exhort him. Let's go. I received a call today that made me laugh. You can do all these things I'm doing. But let's go. That's not for Philip. I'm not out of time. Examples of the gift of prophecy. Examples of the gift of prophecy to end this. We want to give examples now. Yesterday I said we'll give examples of the gift of prophecy or prophecy examples. Number one, example, Acts 21, 10 to 11. Acts 21, 10 to 11. And as we state many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's bed, burned his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit. You see, inspired, this is what I told you from the beginning. I see you are influenced and inspired. It's a prophecy did not, does not come by the will of man, but holy men of God speaks as the Spirit gives them utterance. You see what it says? It says, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the house of the Gentiles. This was somebody exhibiting, displaying the gift of prophecy accurately. Now, Paul had this prophecy and still disobeyed. Okay? Because he was so zealous, but that's not where I'm going. This is an example of prophecy, give somebody operating in that gift from the New Testament, now to the Old Testament, just two. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. You can see, thus says the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, a seed of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seeds of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hands the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. You see, another manifestation of someone with the gift, prophetic gift, operating in a prophetic gift. The prophetic gift is so good because he, he defies the church. You'll find that he yeah, edifies the church. He makes people to be exalted, uh, to be exalted, to be happy, to be excited inside people. You'll find out later on. And I want to, want to warn you. I want to warn you this. I want to. I want to encourage you. I also want to encourage you and warn you, counsel you. When you hear a prophecy from a genuine man of God, don't contend with it. You saw the man. He said because his education cannot take it. It's so enlightening. So he told Elisha, I said, this cannot happen in my own words. And Elisha said, okay, let's do, let me use it as an experiment. You will see it, but you will not be part of it. Okay, don't contend with a true prophet. 
Don't contend with him. Don't make mockery of his prophecy. You might be putting yourself at risk. These are spiritual things, but this, this, some of us don't understand spiritual things. We mock anything. And we, when something happens, we say, well, wow, by God, what have I done? But have you forgotten how you mocked? How you mock a genuine prophet? Okay, he mocked the genuine prophet, and he, 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 you know, he, the, the man just gave it to him. He said, okay, you will see it, you'll be there. And if you follow the story, he saw it, he was part of it, he was in charge of it, and he was taken up out. Don't stand against a genuine prophet. It might hurt you. Okay, let's go. Exhortation is also a way of prophesying. False Corinthians 4, 14, 14, 14. I'm going to read that to you. False Corinthians 14, verse, verse 1. That's four. That's four. First Corinthians fourteen verse four. Okay, let's start from three. But he who prophesies speaks edification. You see, prophecy edifies, edifies, and exhortation. You see, exhortation. E x h o r t a t i o n. Exhortation and comfort to men. Okay, and comfort to men. Okay, so prophets in exhortation is also a way of prophesying. What does this mean? Exhortation is emphatically speaking God's will into our lives to make a divine change. We are incited, we are urged, we are moved, and stirred up to do something that will gloriously transform our lives to the influence of the Holy Spirit. When you see sometimes our general of ourselves are for here and the way of our spiritual parents of our elders in the faith, you say, God bless you. That's a prophetic declaration. Okay? That's a prophetic declaration. It's also like operating in the gift of prophecy, exhortation. It's also a form of prophesying. You say, God bless you. Okay? Very good stuff that you should say amen to. Okay? You don't have to be a prophet. To speak the will of God over your life. You don't have to be to do this exhortation because I'm going to do it now. You don't have to be a prophet to do it. Okay? It's like you confessing what the Bible says, prophetically declaring what the Bible says. You wake up in the morning, stand in front of the mirror, and say, Paul, I did it. You are great. You are the head. You are blessed. You will not die prematurely. You will not bury any of your family members. You will not be conquered. You will not fail. The enemy plans over your life will not succeed. You are saying those words. What are you doing? You are your own prophet. Okay? So I want to make some prophetic declaration as we close this gift of prophecy. I just want to make some prophetic declaration as the Lord lead me. You can be your own prophet and you can change your destiny. Okay, I learned this even before I became a Christian. Because these oral gifts, they are very powerful. Very powerful. Everything, you know, the, 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 the Muslims is the mouth. They read, recite what their books say. The people in the other faith, the Hindu faith, everybody uses all of this oral stuff to speak. Because God says, as long as I live, I should speak in my hearing, so I will do to you. Now, the Bible is a book for us, the Christians. But not only the Christians use it. Okay? So people see these things in the Bible, and never mind they are not Christians, they use it. They use it, mix it with their own stuff, and use it. Okay? But you now that have the Spirit of God that can be your own prophet and change your destiny, you don't use it. So let's do some prophetic declaration before we go. In the name of Jesus, I prophetically declare, God will give you of the dew of heaven. The fatness of the earth shall be yours in the name of Jesus. You have plenty to feed on, plenty to spend, plenty to drink, plenty to wear, your source of income, my source of income, and livelihood will not cease in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not die 
I will not die before my time or before your time in the name of Jesus Christ. All your seed, our seed, shall not die prematurely in the name of Jesus Christ. Men will serve you. Yes, men and nations will serve you. They will bow down to our God in the name of Jesus. You and I will leave an inheritance to our children's children unto generation unborn in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that beginning from today, those who curse you or curse us, their curse shall return upon their own heads. Those who plot evil against us or wish us evil, they shall become victims of their own evil, like the case of Haman in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophetically declare that those who bless you and I shall remain blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Many all over the world, I mean all over the world, shall be praying you and I, and you will ask us to lead them to Jesus in Jesus' name. I will repeat that prophetic statement again. Many all over the world shall be praying you and I because of Christ that is in us, and you will ask us to lead them to Jesus in Jesus' name. One more time, many all over the world shall be praying you and I, and you will ask us to lead them to Jesus in Jesus' name. You and I will not die a useless life. We will not be wasted. No, no, we will not be wasted. The purpose of our lives on earth shall be fully fulfilled. You and I have said it earlier on, I repeat it. You and I will not die before our time. Our seed will not be wasted. They will not die prematurely in the name of Jesus Christ. I put the mark of Jesus on you, on myself, and our families to overcome the troubles of the world in Jesus' name. All the miracles, the godly desires, the breakthroughs, the testimonies, the helpers, the blessing, we have lost to the deceit and lies of the devil shall be totally recovered and restored to us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord shine his countenance upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord help you in Jesus' name. The Lord help you and help me in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So these are some prophetic declarations I have made in the name of Jesus, and you see that they will come to pass in your life. If you have not known Christ, I invite you to Jesus. There is power in that name. The day you confess Christ, you have changed everything about your entire existence. You have changed everything about your whole life. Everything changes. You become what the Bible say, a new person. The Bible says, if a man being in Christ is a new person, the old is gone, the new is here. So if you are like some of us who are fornicators, changing women here and there, you become clean. Your record is clean now before God. Okay? If you have been somebody doing trouble, those things I mentioned the other time, your record becomes clean as long as you don't go back to it. As long as you say, God, I'm sorry, and don't go back to it. You become washed by the blood of love. I think you want to give it a try because it, 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 it's, it's going to bless your life and change everything for good for you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life in Jesus' name. If you have given your life to Christ, just send us a text if you get this message through WhatsApp. Send us an email if you get it through a, um, Facebook or through the uh, YouTube. Or go to our website, www.fountainofyourlover.org.uk. We would like to receive your messages that you have given your life to Christ and so that we can follow you up and pray with you. God bless you. Enjoy your it's a sunny, good afternoon in the United Kingdom. I don't know where you are watching me from or where you watch this video from, but remember, Jesus is Lord. Your friend, your brother, the street evangelist, Paul Adelaide. There is power in the name of Jesus. God bless you. And the chains are broken. Say, say, the chains are broken. The chains that have been holding us down are broken. In Jesus.